Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Wyatt Wednesday. I'm David Still with Wyatt Abertinsky, and we're talking about soldering from a from a very novice, that's me, to can I just expert? We'll just go expert. I mean, yeah. That's all right. Yeah. Okay. Get there. Thanks. I, oh, you are. I just know you'll, you'll deny me claiming that, but that is not the case. So I'll throw you under the bus. So we, we've kind of been hanging out here offline and like, hey, man, you know, let's let's talk about what I've been working on versus what a pro would be working on. Uh, see, a professional versus experts close. Pro sounds like less heavy, right? I'll take it, David. Yeah, sweet, man. Um, so I've got, let's see, last fall, I bought an old Squire Strat off Shop Goodwill. And, and our fans that know Shop Goodwill know Shop Goodwill because they probably live on their lot, especially uh, reverb dealers, hawking guitars off that thing and then and then polishing them and then reselling them. So I bought a cheapo, the bum part, and it's with the intent of like, this is just going to be a, pract a practice, like kit guitar. I'm just going to destroy it, you know, changing out parts and doing whatever, teaching myself the innards of a guitar. And... Um, the bum part is like the neck. It's one of those Squire necks that, in my opinion, sucks. Like, <laughs> I mean, you can get one that's awesome, right? You're like, dude, really? It's like one of those big baseball bat ones. It's no, very it's just, man. I, I don't. It, 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 it. You know what? Maybe it's maybe it's more just like need some hardcore fret work. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, there's no sharp tips or anything. I mean, it's 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 not awful, but it's like okay, if if I make this my practice my kit guitar, my beater, I'm not in love with it. So yeah. no matter what I do to it, it's going to be like, somebody's going to, you know, I'll just sell it for, for less. Than yeah. what yeah. It's not your 72 thin line that you're, you're chopping up. No, no, it's not. Yeah. And that's, that's what we're, you know, we're working towards the 72 thin line. Yes. So right, right, right. Good, bit, I'm in good shape. So thought, Hey, so a couple weekends ago, I was like, let's, I mean, I've had this stuff, man, you know, two kids weekend time is precious. I'm like, but they were gone. I'm like, sweet. I'm going to go down to the shop and I'm just going to like practice around a little bit and I'm going to be ready to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, oh, I should have brought that part. Crap. I can't run, go grab it. So I took a, a Clovis pin and like some, some picture hanging wire and I just soldered the wire to the pin. I bent it, bent it into a U and just like, I'm just trying to get some metal to attach to metal, <laughs> which took a really long time. It was, right. it was comical. Um, <laughs> I'm like, Okay. Not going to be doing pickups this afternoon, <laughs> which is laughable in the first place. I'm like, let me just hop on Amazon and get like, see what they got for like a practice soldering kit. So I picked up this little thing. Let's see. I'm going to hold it up. I'm actually going to hold the back side. Okay. There so a little circuit board with a battery. And actually the LED lights are supposed to be on this side, but I got so, I was so proud of myself <laughs> moving so fast mm -hmm. that soldered the led lights to the wrong side oh, it, it, it does work um, yeah the red one did not work initially and i just re reheated the solder point mm -hmm. and voila you know i worked i worked my magic what mm -hmm. can i say um so th there were 28 total solder points and it was super easy except for i do think so i was using the stock tip on my waller weller weller yeah, weller, weller. Thank yeah. you. You know, like the one that every, you know, if any YouTube channel, Hey, what's an entry level solder iron, get this one. It's like 40 or 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. Um, with a, it doesn't have a temperature readout on it. It just have, has levels one through five. So just guess at three. And a oh, half. wow. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're flying by the speed of the <laughs> each, each increment. Let me tell you, it was hot enough to burn me pretty quick. So I think it's a good one. Right. Right. So at any rate, man, I was, it was, let me just go in here and practice and I know you're, you're homegrown um, school of hard knocks with some professional help. Uh, but you just, I, I, where I was going with this, you're not watching YouTube videos, learning projects. Us guys that don't know any better, there's at least some, some out there, believe it or not, not too many great ones. I didn't spend hours researching, but I was surprised. Like, I thought maybe like one of the first five would have been a home run, one of the first five YouTube videos. Right. Uh, so this was cool. This was like, it was a little pricey, but I thought, hey, for the kids, like they would think that's cool. So it was 12 bucks, maybe $11.99 or $12.99. Right. And that went pretty well. There were two takeaways. 
One, I need some precision snips instead of just like my wire snips because I couldn't, it's pretty ugly on the back. I would try to show up, but it, you won't see it through the camera. And then two, which I'll ask you is, I feel like the stock solder tip, this is where I was going, is a little too wide, especially okay. for these little tiny, what, why, what is, what are the names of the holes that I'm putting, you know, the connections through and solder? I mean, where the solder is. It's just a pad solder ring solder pad solder ring. And, and so i'll explain quick why what i think here you know not not an expert at circuit design but now that i've been doing my own circuits and multiple sides and tons of vias and whatnot which you don't really need but um so a lot of things nowadays like circuit boards are double-sided so um there's multiple layers stacked up caked up and so one of those rings uh, could have different connections in, in theory uh, and very small micro layers. So yeah. if you don't feed solder all the way through and you just have the component hanging in there and loosely um, kind of soldered into that pad, then it might not be making contact with both layers and that will cause it to kind of short or have an issue or just not work at all. Uh, it depends on how the circuit, I mean, obviously it's a very safe, plain circuit to work on. So, you know, your consequence was it, it didn't light up, but once you reheated it, let it sit a little bit and then get feed enough solder through the pad. Uh, now you're making connection between those two planes or three planes, however many there are. And boom, you've got continuity. The uh, and, and it worked. One, one tip from learn to solder kit.com that's a company mm -hmm. made out of California, these mm -hmm. were made in manufacturing the USA. Um, they they're like, Hey, th the circuit board is can take a lot of heat, so kind of in their instructions, we're like, I mean, you know, only hold it there for a few seconds, but don't. My takeaway was don't stress yourself out. Whereas if we're working on a pot, uh, it's a little different story, we're not going to just you know hold, hold it there forever. Uh, you're going to you dam damage the pot. Um, so I definitely, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm going to get it hot. You know what I mean? And I didn't overkill it. But right. when I was done, I was like, huh, there's some little brown spots on here. I guess that was me just really uh, laying it to it. Well, uh, that could also be, you know, I, I know like a few people get psyched out because of um, sometimes there's like rosin in between um, like flux that kind of melts with the uh whatever your solder is made out of i use personally my shameless plug everybody lead solder it is not that dangerous for you uh, by the time it melts on the tip it's evaporated and it's still probably bad in the state of california but basically you know it's just like the skin contact and stuff you know it's not healthy but you know use a fan be safe um totally missed what the heck you were talking about because i got so heated about because oh, i can't i can't stand non-leaded solder oh well yeah so just the, the, the little brown spots yeah. there, but i was wa wondering if i was overheating right. and and in fact they're actually on the the front of the board mm -hmm. i mean I, again i don't expect you to see it yeah. not on the back because the front is is light colored so it's white and, and, here, yeah. a little bit of and so I wasn't paranoid, like I'm training myself bad, like the contact, there was too much contact to the length of contact between the iron and the board was too long. It actually went really quick. So I did all this in a little under 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Not that everything's super pretty, but it's, it's not crazy ugly. What I instantly found a respect for, which I didn't know, um, is having everything like straight and level and pretty. So my LED lights are like a little crooked. Because mm -hmm. I, you know, I planted them in there, bent the wires back. I'm like, yeah, that's not straight, but you know what? It's good enough for government work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So I rolled with it, but there's clearly an art to having everything square, parallel, perpendicular. There is a lot of work there. Right, right, and and you, I don't know. It depends on the application. So like with boutique pedals and amps we you know in the community we take it like extremely serious that um you know everything is uniform and even when you're choosing like component selection and whatnot that even like colors to shapes match you know there's got to be like a geometry to it especially if you're bending like bus wire 
around in like an amplifier boutique yeah. amp or for pedals a lot of guys like to do the 90 degree bends and have all the little um, components attached to the bus wire whatever they're doing um it's something that i try to explore and I, I don't know my best tip is get it like a pano vice or a um circuit board holder i use a, a helping hands and a pano vice so helping hands you know those little um yeah. jewelers tools or whatever I, I got mine at like harbor freight for like five bucks or whatever but know. you get all the different hands and, and whatnot and, and you know claws and so basically what i'll do especially for like my little enigmas where the circuit board is all point to point i'll just have the claws pinching down um hemostats are the best tool personally i, I think hemostats and little lead like lead cutters um keep them sharp don't be cutting like strings off with them keep them like, specifically just for that application of, of cutting the uh, lead and wire um those are my two most used tools in soldering and then obviously a, a pneumatic like soldering pump uh they have automatic ones they have manual ones it depends on how intense you're going but touch and go that's my my number one tip you know uh I, when i started um I was like definitely super timid. I made all the rookie mistakes from using too little heat to using way too much heat. And, um, you know, not even shying away from it. Like I've wrecked Marshall amps. I mean, there's some amps that like your board, you know, you can keep it on there, scorch it, right. Depends on the, the material that you're using, but some amps and some pedals have like very, very thin layers um, coating the traces. So if you have just a little too much heat coming off and the pad and, and lead connection are very, um, or trace connection are very thin, chances are it's going to lift off. You're left with either, uh, you know, a silhouette or in best case scenario, your trace lifts a bit. You can cut that and then jump it, you know? Got it. Yeah super undesirable but it happens um especially in like critical repairs for uh not not necessarily like music applications but like cell phones laptops mm -hmm. tvs and, and appliances and stuff where uh you're, you're working with smaller uh, like microcontrollers and, and more sensitive chips um not really so much in you know maybe power amps but not so much in amplifiers but i've been there and i've done it um and basically the way I got good at, at soldering and, and kind of judging what kind of heat, what kind of tip I'll use is, is just through repetition practice. Um, it's kind of like golfing in a way, you know, you, you can select the proper club for the proper distance or whatever your situation is. But um, per your, uh, per your weller, I use the thinnest tip possible. Okay. Um, you know, I thought so I was using a baseball bat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I know what you're talking about. I couldn't, I couldn't get into the solder ring. I'm like, good lord, dude, this yeah. things are big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and and there are times where you need stuff like that. Um, I have like currently I'm using a, a kit from Amazon that I got for I asked for it for Christmas, um, and it is a hot air like for surface mount component. Yeah. So like doing, uh pedals that are going to like rework stations for uh, like electro harmonics is a company that uses all surface mount components or double sided MXR um, very technical, tricky stuff. And then my other side of the station is, you know, my, my manual soldering iron with an adjustable heat. Um, the only weird thing is it it's in Fahrenheit, not Celsius. I'm used to working in Celsius. So uh, when I was turning it on initially using it, um, I was using it about like 400 degrees less than what I'm normally used to. And my, all my solder joints for like a month and a half, uh, were cold, you know, on pedals, on like client stuff. And it wasn't until like one of my tech friends, um, caught one of my pieces and he's like, give that a tug. And it was like cold solder joint, like yanked right off. And I was like, no, um, <laughs> so I, I just, I crank it up to the, the, almost the max heat. And generally it's bad practice for the reason that you're going to, you know, wear the tip out faster. So uh, to your point about changing the tip size, um, I use a very small, precise 
uh, like a needle tip. Yeah. It's tips already dead. Like I need to replace it and it's only July, you know, so five months, six months, uh, I can see like the difference in using it initially. I was very precise. And now it's like solder will like group up on the more towards the base of it. And so you can start seeing, oh, you know, it's, it's wearing out. Um, and so it's good practice to always have like a couple different ones. I use the chisel tip probably like the second most, okay. uh, so like a Sharpie or a highlighter tip. And that's perfect, I think, for like, you know, the amplifiers, uh, bigger components. And I don't know, it just gives you more control. So you can, you can pivot because it's got a sharp angle. So you can kind of twist and pivot kind of melt solder in ways that you want. Um, I guess my other big solder no-no for the audience is don't melt it on the tip and then in, like, I don't know why people do that. Um, that's, it's just, it's science, David, it's science. <laughs> you want to melt or, well, you want to heat the surface. You know, you, you wet the tip, a little bit of solder because yeah. liquids, uh, you know, conduct heat faster and transfer heat faster. So a uh, little bit of, of the wet tip, put it on like a, a, your metal. So if it's a potentiometer, what I like to do is scuff it up a little bit, you know, use a, a jeweler screwdriver or something and create some tooth because that it's too smooth, right? Initially, in fact, it'll, so you can use a sandpaper or whatever, you know, wet the tip, get it on the pot, right? Heat that up and then from an alternate angle, start introducing, you know, your lead of, of solder onto that hotter surface. And once the surface is to temperature, then it'll just smoothly glide right over. And I've, I've only taught two people how to do this, you know, accurately, you know, my friends and whatnot. And, you know, the first instinct is just goop it on and then just like plop it on. And uh, one never really does anything it's just going to be it's going to beat and fly off um and two it's going to make a mess you know it's going to make a, a smoky yucky mess you always want to keep the tip as clean as possible you know uh, constantly cleaning off um with a, a compound sometimes it's in with like the brillo pads and uh yeah just take your time with it you know my my mistake when i was lifting traces off of $3,000 marshals and Mesa boogies. When I started, you know, trial by fire, dad said, go. And I, I, you know, I tried to watch what he did and then I tried to do it. And I was ruining stuff left and right, but eventually I got it, you know, and it's just about heating that surface, getting the necessary heat, introducing that solder. Boom. And, uh, that's really like my, my big how to, I love um, it. I, I think what we'll do is, uh, oh, no, go ahead, David, and then we'll. Well, I was going to say, this key takeaways, hemostats. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, a chisel tip or a pin, pin tip, mm -hmm. depending on the application. The helping hands, which I had helping hands, and they were definitely helpful. Um, yes. And you had, you had one other key point in there. Well, of course, your, your lead-based uh, solder wire, but. but um, yeah. 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 Um, you know, and, and. Uh, I saw some comments on it, you know, the recent post about it and, you know, shiny is good. Shiny is your goal. You know, you want to heat it up until you get sort of a mirror finish. It's not always going to be perfect. Um, but when the surface is clean and you, you're going in, it should be a mirror kind of finish, mirror polish on it. Um, but speaking of the, the leaded thing, you know, the only thing I didn't mention in the comments was, so you're constantly working with, other materials, um, other amps, you don't know, you know, it, everything now is lead free solder, which is a disaster. It takes extremely high heat to kind of melt onto a surface. Okay. Um, it, it's just, it's like the Rojas compliant stuff. I don't know. It's just a pain, but say you were working on a squire and you're trying to put new pickups in to the selector switch or, grounding wires to your potentiometers right so you can stick your iron on there and nothing's going to happen and you can have it as hot as you want and not a lot's going to happen um 
But if you start introducing, like, you know, instead of cleaning it off, you start introducing your leaded solder into that, right? It's going to start mixing colors. You're, you're, it's kind of like creating an alloy. You know, you're mixing all these different metals together. And then it's going to be some shiny. It's going to be hazy. It might turn white. Um, that's really just due to the, that that mixture, that compound you're kind of creating. It's like making a potion on top of your, your stuff. So it's not always necessarily a, a bad weld. But you should generally, you know, remove that stuff before you start working, especially in amplifiers. I, I see it all the time now where it's like all shotgun, uh, a hot rod deluxe, right? You know, the, I'm always working on them. And it'll start, you know, the, the, the solder bead will turn a little, you know, grayish, silverish. But it's still a good, strong connection. It's just that mixture of two materials. And so that's why it's like it's good practice to get whatever previous uh, solder or material is off, but don't be like totally devastated if it's not, you know, oh, I can see my teeth in it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so the, really the moral of the story is like anything else in life, practice makes perfect. Exactly. Yeah. It. And that's what I realized instantly. And, mm -hmm. and I knew better. I was just had really high hopes. Yeah. Well, you did great, man. You did great. You know, even if it yeah. is a little kid. And this was, this was super fun. So next to my list is, is to order something a little more complicated or actually, I don't care about complexity, but with more solder points, right? So this right. had 28, it went quick. Look at something with maybe a couple hundred or a hundred just for practice. Cause the, the, my goal is the end result. Not this, I mean, I want the, whatever little contraption I'm creating, if I'm buying a practice bit for it to work, but I'm more interested in, in am I getting, practical ap application for what I'm learning because I want to apply it in good manner to something right. that really matters to me. But, you know what, but I don't care. <laughs> you got me thinking that the, the, the wheels are turning, you know, it'd be a, a kind of a fun project. I mean, a kind of waste of materials for the sake of getting better, but uh, a cool cheap thing you can do is on Amazon, just get perf board, like prototyping board. Yeah. Uh, you know, you get your double sided kind of like that, which, don't use that to build pedals. I mean, it's a disaster. It's so bad. You know, been there, done that. Um, it's not like it used to be. And so uh, if, if it's single-sided, build pedals. If it's double-sided, nightmare. Why don't you just buy a cup, like a pack of that and then just practice your little welds on each hole? I mean, you're going to have like 200 some on each square, but at least you can like practice flowing it through. And then you can take a multimeter, you know, check test for continuity on one side and the other. And if you get your beat, Hey, you know, that's a perfect weld. go to the next one and just test, you know, I think that'd be a blast, honestly. And, and it's, it's just a cheap, easy, cheesy way to do it. Um, practice like making traces and, and doing little things. So. Perfect. All right. Got a plan. I like it. You know, we'll, we'll pick this up and we'll talk about maybe in, a, in another white Wednesday, we'll talk about it. Real, real world environment. Sure. Still maybe you know what, maybe we can use the, the squire as a test bed. Mm -hmm. Um, because look, I bought the, the, the pickups I have, I think they were 20 bucks, right? Uh, you can imagine where they can, I mean, who knows where they're coming from and we'll see if they actually work. But the whole point was just, let's go through the exercise on something that if it's a bust, I don't feel bad. And I didn't lose a ton of money. I would certainly right. be outside. Right. And a, I'm not, I'm confident. I'm not going to absolutely destroy it. But if mm -hmm. I did, it's not the 72 thin one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sweet, man. Well, dude, thanks for your time, Wyatt. We'll call it a day. Hey, everybody, thanks for, for watching. And uh, leave us a comment. Ask us a question. Of course, subscribe, hit the like button. We appreciate it all. And we look forward to doing more of these, man.